Hey, this is Evan Hutchison. Uh, today I wanted to go over a 1031 exchange, also known as a like kind exchange. It's a transaction, it's usually related to real estate, uh, where the buyer and the seller swap properties in order to avoid paying capital gains taxes. And you don't necessarily need to find someone to trade properties with. You can sell your property to a third party, keep the proceeds with a qualified intermediary, which is very important. If the cash goes to you directly, the, the exchange is off. So you need to make sure to find one, usually an attorney that will hold the funds until you purchase a new property. And then you pull those funds out to, to help in the purchase of the new property. So you can do this with any investment property. So if you, if you have a business and you own a building and you decide to sell the building to try to find a new building, you can do it with the, with the sale and the purchase of the, the sale of the old building and the purchase of the new building. If you rent property to somebody, if you're a landlord, you can do it with that. You cannot do it with a residential real estate where you live. You can't do it if you're developing property, if you buy some land, build a house and sell it. You could potentially do it if you buy land, build a house and start renting it out for a, a satisfactory rental term. And then you decide to sell it. You can do it that way, but really it's just for investment property. So most people, when they do this, they want to defer all capital gains because who wouldn't want to do that? But there are circumstances for partial 1031 exchanges. Um, when you, you can buy down, so if you purchase a house that was not as expensive as this or is not as high as the sales price that you um, sold the original house for so you you sold a house for 800 grand you purchased a house for 600 grand that's a buy down that automatically creates a, a gain that's recognized immediately but you can still potentially get a partial deferral and i'll go over that with you um, one thing I want to leave out when I'm going over examples is, are the closing costs and the depreciation. The uh, depreciation recapture, if you rented the property out and you're, and you're um, recognizing depreciation over the years, that can also be deferred along with your capital gains. Uh, the closing costs can be built into some basis as exchange costs, or at least part of uh, a certain amount or certain types of closing costs can but I'm gonna leave that leave that alone because I don't want to overcomplicate this I want to go over the basics so that when you're trying to figure out if you want to do this you can have a, a solid understanding of uh, what you would need to do to move forward so this is a basic example example one of um, a full exchange so as you can see down here the uh, the full gain is deferred this is essentially what you're going for. You purchase a property 10 years ago for 500 grand. You sell it this year for 750. You have a mortgage at the time of the sale of $300,000. Therefore, the cash proceeds uh, of the sale are 750 minus the payoff of the mortgage, which is 450 grand. Now you put that with a qualified intermediary and you have a certain amount of days to find a new property. Once you do, you're hoping to find one that's as, that is the same price or more than the sales price of the original property. In this case, it's the same price. You use all the funds from the intermediary to purchase the new property. Then you just you have 300 grand of your own money that you want to put into it. In that situation the $250,000 gain, which is the sales price of the old property minus the old cost basis, 750 minus 500, that's all deferred. Because you found a property that is the same price or more than the original property and you used all the funds um, from the proceeds from the old property to put into the new property. Now another example is very similar. I used all the same numbers except that the new property has a mortgage. So you purchase the old property for 500, you sell it for 750, you have a mortgage that you paid off of 300. The 750 minus 300 is 450 cash proceeds that you put with a qualified intermediary. The gain 
is the 7, 750 minus the 500. So that's 250. So you have a $250,000 game. You have proceeds of 450. You find a new property with the same purchase price, 750. And it doesn't have to be the same purchase price. It can be more. If it's less, I'll go over that here in a second. But you find a property with 750 or, uh, that costs 750 as well. On this one, you decide to um, take out a mortgage of 350. Therefore, the cash paid from the intermediary for the new property is only 400 grand. You are you are um, keeping fifty thousand dollars for yourself. As a result, since you didn't use all of the money, fifty thousand dollars is recognized immediately. The remainder is deferred, so it's still the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar gain that you would normally have to recognize. But in this situation, you can defer two hundred thousand dollars of it. You just have to recognize the 50 immediately since you did not use all of the proceeds. As you can see, the mortgage in this property is $50,000 more than the mortgage on the sale of the old property. Therefore, you kept 50, you're recognizing this immediately, you're deferring the 200 until you sell the new property, in which case you'll have to recognize it, unless of course you do another 1031 exchange and you just keep going on and on forever. You could potentially do that, and some people do. Uh, one more example. So I go over the basic, just the normal, you know, normal 1031 example, then one where there is uh, some cash boot, which is taxable. Cash boot is essentially the amount of money that you're receiving that did not go into the new property. And then this example is a buy down. So if you sell a property for $750,000 and you purchase a new property worth six hundred and fifty, dollars already right there it's a taxable event. If you go down in value, you have to recognize that no matter what. Even if the mortgage on the new property is, is um, lower than the mortgage on the property you sold, like in this situation, you're still receiving $450,000 and all of that money is still going to the new property, that does not matter. Since you've purchased down, you have to recognize a hundred grand immediately, which is the amount of the, the buy down, 750 minus the 650. You recognize a hundred grand immediately, and then you can defer the rest. You can defer 150 grand in this particular scenario. And there's I mean, there, it, it gets pretty complicated. I could do a lot more examples, but I just wanted to give you some basic information for now. Um, maybe at some point in the future, I'll get a, do a little more, uh, some more complex transactions because I know whenever you're doing anything tax related, it's never as basic as, as we're showing it to be. But this will at least give you an idea of what you need to do and what you need to look out for in order to either defer the full gain or defer as much as possible with the money that you do have in the properties that you are selling and purchasing. So I hope this helps a bit.